pose at the back edge of the mat. We'll just crawl the fingertips forward, settle the hips back into the heels, and you can rest your forehead down. We'll just allow ourselves to start to feel into the breath. So notice on the inhale where the breath is really landing in your body. And as you exhale, what part of the body feels like it's emptying out or releasing that breath. And then we'll we'll work towards allowing the upper abdomen, the rib cage in all directions, and a little bit of the chest and back to expand on the inhale and contract and empty on the exhale. And then this exchange of breath in and out is really what will guide our practice and initiate each and every one of our movements today. Doesn't matter how fast or slow I'm moving, you're going to ride the wave of your own breath. So we'll just start on your inhale, lifting the hips up. You'll notice your hands are further away from your knees than a, than a good full point meal. We'll leave it like that. And we're going to take really big circles the hip circle around the knees here, the shoulders circle around the wrists. You can make any adjustments that feel good for you. You might slow it down or send those hips back a little bit more. And you'll swap the direction of your circles. So this first movement really is getting yourself to feel all the parts of your body and send breath into those parts that are feeling a little bit more stiff or stuck or sticky. Good. And then we'll... Settle the hips back to the heels. Now this movement's a little bit unique. You'll want to keep elbows and forearms down and feel like you're sliding your nose along the mat. Don't worry, it doesn't quite touch. And as your ribs pass your elbows, you'll pick them up. It's quite strong. And you'll find yourself lying down. Your hands will wind up next to your ribs. Shoulders back and we'll just lift the chest. And then peel the hip thighs up and rest your hips back to your knees. Uh oh, your hips back to your heels. Let's try it again, but don't go quite as slow. We just slide our way forward, peel the elbows up, and then extend. Exhale, sink the hips back to the heels. And we'll do one more like this. If it's not working for you, you might allow yourself to just settle into a cat and cat. Yeah? You're either in cat and cow, or again, we're going to take just one more like this. You'll feel the strength that's required to stay quite low. That's it. And then just shifting your way forward on an inhale. This time, curl your toes, lift your knees, and press your hips back and up towards that downward facing dog shape. We have the knees bent, and you're going to really exaggerate the bend in your right knee. Stretch the left leg a bit straighter and then swap sides. So you'll just alternate bending one knee, extending the other. Letting the hips shift from side to side. And then settling in towards the center. So in down dog, a reminder, your fingers spread wide, they press forward. Your hips float back and up and we invite the bend. We'll lift both heels as high as they can go. Drop both heels to the right side, and it feels like more weight is in your right hand. I want you to try to push into your left hand. And now bend your knees and extend a couple of times. Keep trying to press more into the left hand, and we'll get a really nice release on that left side of the lower back. Okay? So come back through center with both heels quite high and drop them over to the left side. And then Push more intentionally into your right hand as you start to bend and extend those knees. Don't worry, your upper back and shoulders get a break here in just a moment. We'll come back in through center, lift those heels high, and wriggle yourself forward towards a plank. We'll just melt the knees down, the five hips belly down, and take the hands wider than the mat. Come right up onto the tips of the fingers so the elbows point the ceiling. As you inhale, we'll peel the forehead, the chin, and the heart up. And as you exhale, heart, chin, forehead down. 
and you'll let your spine do what we call undulate. So instead of just lifting up and down like a board, imagine you're peeling up one little rib at a time, melting down one rib at a time. Good. Let's take one more just like this. Stretch back through toes, lift up through crown, and then melt your way back. Good. Hands next to the ribs with toes curling. We'll just bend those hips back and up and give ourselves a, a couple of breaths here. So now that we've started to peel back some of the layers of resistance and tension. Can we just settle in for a moment here with bent knees, head heavy, and feel back into that natural rhythm of breath. Here we are attempting to breathe in and out through the nose, but we'll allow the breath to move through the throat. So there's a bit of a sound like, like you're trying to fog up a window or a mirror in front of you, but you keep your mouth closed. We'll work to generate that sound throughout the practice. And now, just looking forward, and walk the feet all the way ahead towards the hand. Slide the fingers right up the shins, get long from the crown of the head to the tail as you breathe in. And then exhale, fold or melt your way down. Head back. Strong into the legs, sweep your arms wide to the sides to stretch all the way up overhead. With the palms pressing, pull the hands down in front of the chest. Keep your tail down, your pubic bone up. As you inhale, we'll open the hands and lean backwards a little bit. Your pelvis shifts forward. Exhale, return the hands to the heart. So as you're inhaling, elbows stay down by the ribs, hands open, hips forward, front of chest to breastbone lift. Let's do it just one more time. Inhale. And exhale with the palms pressing. We inhale, reach the arms all the way up like you would touch the ceiling. Exhale, stretch the hands wide and fold forward from hips to knees. Inhale, the hands slide up the shin so we get a little bit longer. As you exhale, let your fingertips find the floor, the knees might be bending. Inhale, right foot steps back of the long, low lunge and we'll rest the right knee down as you exhale, point the toes. Stay here for the inhale. You want to feel like your breastbone is lifting up. And then as you exhale, we'll walk the hands back, straighten the left leg and lift the left toe. On the inhale, we'll crawl the way, hands forward, bend into that left knee. And again, it's this sound of your breath, a bit like an oceanic like sound. And then you ride the wave of that breath. We're going to take one more just like this, letting the breath and the body slow down just a little bit. And then as you next inhale and bend into the left knee, we'll stretch the fingers forward and all the way up. Baby fingers spin in, relax the shoulders down. Just give yourself a moment to be here. Cubic bone lift up in front, tail down in the back, hips are square. You'll stay for your next inhale breath and then exhale as the arms just drop open. There's only a soft bend in the elbow. Inhale, arms reach up. You might lean backwards a little bit as you exhale, palms face up. And then inhale up one more time like this. We're going to hold here. Relax the shoulders. Stay for the inhale. As you exhale, you'll twist towards your left. So right hand reaches to the front edge of the mat. Left hand reaches to the back, and you'll look backwards towards your left hand. Stretch your arms apart, equal and up. And then rest your left hand right on the back of your pelvis. Stretch your right arm up. You could stay or start to lean backwards. We want to try to lengthen the spine, though, not dump and compress. Lift out of the lower back to reach. This is your final inhale. As you exhale, we'll come forward and place the right hand on the floor, inside of the left foot, and the left hand up so you're still in your twist. Your choice is absolutely to stay here. You might feel like bending into the right knee and see if the left hand can hold the right foot. If it's not a fit, there's no need to force it. You could just stay and reach with that bent knee, or you can release it back to the floor. We're only going to be here for another full breath anyway. 
So let's unravel and place the left hand down, lift up that back right knee, and then we'll step left foot back to plank pose. Holding your plank pose for a full breath. And then only setting the right knee down, floating the left leg up, like we're in a three point kneeling position. Elbows wrap in and we shift the shoulders forward of the wrist. Bend your elbows so the elbows hold your rib cage and you lower about halfway down. Press straight back up. You'll do that twice more from crown of head to back left foot. It's one long line. You're moving a bit like a seesaw or a teeter top. Beautiful. Now we are going to lower all the way down. It might look like chin and chest on the floor, left leg high, and then peel through, or it might look a little different. That's okay. Take a little cobra or a back extension here. And as you exhale, we'll press back through child's pose. Hips find heels, and you give yourself a really nice full breath in through the nose, open the mouth, exhale it all out. <clears throat> Inhale, go ahead, just shift your way forward again towards full point kneel. And exhale, take your downward facing dog. One full breath just to reset here and down dog. And then inhale that right leg, stretch it straight back behind you. We'll keep the toes spinning down. And as you press forward into your hands, feel your abdomen come closer to your left leg. Lift the left heel up and then step your right foot outside of the right hand. And then your left foot outside of the left. Feet stay flat, bend the knees and squat down. You might stay here so it looks a bit more like a frog. Or you, if your feet can stay flat, you can bring your hands to your heart. Your hips drop deeper. Elbows help the knees remain open. You'll give yourself another full breath. From here, we really need to gather strength of the pelvic floor, integrity of the feet and the legs, and use your inhale breath to rise up. On the way up, Arms stretch overhead, please spin your toes forward, reach up and back, and then exhale a big dive forward, out over your version of straight leg. Inhale, slide the hands straight up the shins, look forward. You're turning toes out, bending the knees and sitting the hips back down. We stay here in the squat for a full breath. Make sure feet are flat and knees are open. And the next inhale breath, we press palms. We slide straight up, toes forward. Hands could lean backwards for a backward bend. Exhale, stretch forward. Remember, there could be a soft bend in your knees. Inhale, hands slide up the shin. And exhale, toes turning out, bend the knees. Last time here in your little chair. Staying that full breath, opening through hips quite a lot today. Press palms and rise up with strength, integrity. Reach all the way up, your toes are forward. This time we fold all the way forward and move on to the other side. Halfway lift on the inhale breath. As you exhale, fingertips land. We'll step the left foot back, big step back. Settle the left knee down into the floor and pause and hold. You want the fingertips framing that front right foot, the breastbone forward on the inhale. As you exhale and curl the hands back, right leg straightening, try to keep the chest lifted, not rounding down. Inhale to crawl forward. And exhale to pull back. And again, it's a bit like rugging this wave, shifting forward, inhale, shifting back out to the exhale. One more, just like this. Now that we've mobilized, we can release a little deeper. We hold that deep lunge, sweep the arms all the way up, keep the pubic bone reaching up, the tail dragging down, the shoulder blades dragging down. We still reach tall through the fingernails on the inhale, and then as you exhale, soft elbows open the arms wide, a bit like wings, and how they reach up. Exhale, you might even lean back a little more this time. One more like this and And exhale. Good. Stay here, deep, full breath. You'll just turn to the right side. 
Stretch the right hand back even more. The left hand forward even more. So you even feel like your, your collarbones are getting pulled apart. One more. Right hand finds the back of the pelvis. The left arm stretches up. Reach to lift away from that left knee and then maybe a little lean back. We'll stay for one more breath. You might find your gaze resting on the back right corner of your mat. And on your next exhale, we'll place the left hand down inside of the right foot, the right hand skyward, and you just pause. Try not to collapse into the left arm, push like you're gonna lift away from it. Stay or bend the back left knee. Maybe your right hand holds the left foot, maybe it doesn't fit on this side. Wherever you are, just another breath or two. And let the breath be calm and slow, steady and deep. And then we'll release both hands back to the floor. Lift your back right, uh, left knee off the floor. When we come back, right leg is straight behind you and you're in that three, uh, three leg plank. We're only resting the left knee down. So now you're in that three point kneel. Keep the right leg really strong. Shift the shoulders forward. We lower halfway down. Exhale, press up. You want to feel that your elbows are holding your rib cage. And we'll press. We'll just do that one, one more time. Keep the neck long, shoulders away from the ears. And remember, on the way down, don't worry if it doesn't quite look like this. Chin and chest down. Pull your body forward. It's a little baby cobra. It doesn't need to be hot. And then we'll press our way back to child's pose. Give yourself a full round of breath. Inhale. Let that one go. Exhale. Our inhale, best to shift up forward. Exhale, straight back to downward facing dog, where you again get a full round to just reset. Perhaps breathing in through the nose and opening the mouth to exhale. Returning to all nostril breathing before extending that left leg straight back and up. Toes are sitting down, hips level, head heavy between the arms. With the right heel up as you next breathe in and just stepping the left foot all the way outside of the left hand. The right foot all the way outside of the right hand. You look a bit like a frog here. You could stay there, open the hips. I think the hips down and open the knee. Chest tall, spine long, feet grounded. From this place of grounding you, Centering strength, press the palms and rise up just once this time in the head. Spin the toes forward, maybe even lean back. And then exhale, just drop the hands down by the sides. Give yourself a moment to arrive. Sama Sitihi. This standing, even, steady, balancing pose that you're in. And then we'll continue to add up. Inhale, those arms stretch all the way overhead. We'll exhale, release the hands behind the back this time and interlace the fingers. Try to keep the palms pressing if possible. Shoulders roll back, chin and chest lift on the inhale. As you exhale, bend from the hips and the knees. You'll bend so much that your abdomen can come to your thigh, chest to the knees and head can be heavy. Let's stay here for a breath. Drop the knuckles a little bit further behind the back of the head. If your shoulders don't like this, you can drop the hands back down by the head. Now we'll keep the inner lace of the fingers, bend the knees deeper and lift the head and the heart to look forward. The knuckles are stretching away from you. As you exhale, belly on thighs, chest on knees, you might straighten the legs a little more as you fold. And we'll repeat that. Inhale, bend, lift head and heart, stretch more across the chest. And then exhale, fold, let the head be heavier. And one more, just like this, kind of like we're, we're flossing out those joints. Yeah, we're releasing tension from all the muscles along the back line. This time, inhale, just lift head and heart. You have that in the of your finger. Stick the body weight into the left foot. And then step your right foot back. So it's a long lunge. We'll lift the head, the chest up, and stretch the knuckles back. You can bend your back right knee a bit if you'd like. You have the right heel quite high. We're going to stay here for another full inhale. Now, as you exhale, start to lean forward. I want you to feel your left rib cage and shoulder start to come inside of the left knee. Good. 
Good. Now you're absolutely welcome to continue working here, head down, hands drop behind the head, or let's make it a bit more accessible. Place the fingertips on the floor outside of your mat. So with this foundation, now you can work deeper. Drop the rib cage and chest down lower. The left hip pull back more. You're welcome to let the head drop. You might even find head on left big toe today. Who knows, it's Saturday, right? I saw that cheeky smile, nice job. Just to breathe here. Doesn't matter what it looks like. How amazing does that feel? Who knew that your body could go there? Now you just have another full breath. Please so just lift head and heart, place your palms flat. You're gonna get the, the back view. So just go slowly. You're stepping your left foot back to that three leg plank, but this time we're gonna place the ball of the left foot on the outside of the mat, on the right side. Spin your whole front body to face up to the ceiling. Don't worry if it didn't fit. We're gonna bend the knees and drop the hips down. You're welcome to set your bum all the way down if you need. And then press into the left foot, into the right foot, and lift your hips, your chest up to the ceiling. Do that one more time. Maybe don't drop all the way down, just lightly. And then lift. As you hold at the top, stay for a breath. Feel this extension, this expansion. And then slowly back to your plank pose. Go ahead, lower yourself all the way down to the floor. Roll the shoulders back and down as you peel the forehead the chin and the heart up, and exhale. Press your way back, straight to downward facing dog this time. And give yourself a moment here just to reset and to reconnect. The letting go of, of anything that starts to come up for you, yeah? So when we find new postures or movements that are challenging for us. Sometimes our mind likes to come up with a little opinion about that. But our yoga practice, while very uh, dynamic and physical in nature, it has a lot more to do with steadying the mind. Those thoughts that rise up, we can actually stop their uh, forward progression. We don't need to create a story about how that didn't work for our body or how we couldn't do something. Let's take the right leg straight up behind us. Now you can stay as we practiced here before, or just roll your right hip open to the right side. Then you can lift your right leg higher, doesn't matter how high. And then try bending the right knee and you'll feel this really nice opening sensation for the right hip. You'll look under your left armpit because really we want this right chest and shoulder to drop towards the mat. So the upper body looks like it's still in downward. Yeah. And looking forward, we'll unravel the right leg and just step the right foot all the way to the hand. Maybe it doesn't get there. It's okay. You shift it forward. Now we're going to have a little play. Fingertips in front of the right foot. Yeah. Lift the left leg. So all the way is in the right leg. The fingertips are just there for support. Your option one is to stay here. Your option two is to lean a little bit into your right fingertips. Roll the front of your body open to the left side of your space. Your left hand could be on the hip or reaching skyward. And you'll try to take some of the weight out of the right hand. Your right knee could be bent or straight, it doesn't matter. We're in the half moon pose. That's on your next breath out, just facing forward, set both hand and left foot down to meet the right. Give yourself a moment to just dangle here. Head heavy. You can hold on to the elbows if that feels good. Release any tension in the neck and the shoulder. And then we'll release the hand. On the inhale, breath will slide the fingers up the shins. Just look forward. On the exhale, breath. We'll fold a little deeper. Root down into the soles of the feet and rise all the way up. Reach your arms overhead and then release the hands behind the back. And when you interlace the fingers, go for the unnatural grip. So the opposite thumb is on top. And then roll the shoulders back and stretch the chin and the chest up. This is our inhale. 
As you exhale, bend from hips and knees, let the belly find the thighs, chest find the knees, head be heavy. Right away on the inhale, lift head and heart and bend the knees deep, looking at it. And then exhale, fold, melt, let that head go really heavy, legs might go straight. We'll do this twice more. Finding the breath that really guides your movement, doesn't matter how fast or slow it is, but let it be your breath. And with the fingers still interlaced, we bend those knees, lift head and heart, hold, really settle in here, get solid in your foundation and shift all the way into the right foot. Gracefully, of course, step that left foot back, stay low, and then peel the head and the heart back up. Stretch the knuckles back more, feel that stretch across your chest. You can bend the back left knee if that feels better. Yeah, now remember, we can hang on here as we start to tip forward, get long in the back left leg. Slide your right rib cage and shoulder on the inside of the right knee. And again, maybe you just play with letting the hand fall behind the back of the head for a moment, but we'll release them to the floor, make this more accessible. High on the fingertips will help you. We'll wrap that right hip backward. Drop the head and the back thigh deep. Going just to your capacity and be happy with where you are. Letting the pose come and meet you where you are. If you hold in stillness and you breathe deeper, I promise you'll make more space. This is the final breath. Just begin to gaze forward, place both palms flat. So we're stepping the right foot back like that three leg plank, but we're going to place the ball of the right foot down on the outside of the mat on the left side. Spin so your whole left foot could go flat, right arm up. You can stay or sink those hips down. You might even have to readjust and then press up and open. I have to adjust because I'm going to knock those Christmas trees down. Reach up and open. And the next time you come up, you're going to hold it. You can have the ball of the right foot down or hold foot down. Stretch your chest. And then roll forward, you find yourself in a plank. Inhale here, just melt your way down on your exhale. Good, this time we're gonna pause. Spin the heels out, the toes in. Stack the fist and just rest the forehead on the fist. We'll give ourselves three deep breaths. Checking in that that breath is still moving in and out through nose, through throat, you can hear its sound. It's still able to expand the upper abdomen, the rib cage in all directions, even the chest and upper back gets full. And as you exhale, everything contracts, empties out and releases. Whatever we might've been stirring up through that practice. Fantastic. And then we place the hands next to the ribs, kind of toes, and then just peel our way back to downward facing dog. We take that one full breath to reset in nose, perhaps even out through the mouth. We start by stretching left leg straight back, pausing and holding here if you wish, or rolling the left hip open to the left side, try to keep the upper body square to the mat, lift the straight left leg higher, and then bending the left knee. You might even look under the right armpit, see if you can see those left tippy toes. Good, just give yourself another breath. And you'll unravel the hip, draw that left knee towards the nose to set the left foot through the hand. Shift it forward if it didn't quite yet to make it there. And now all 10 fingertips go in front of that left foot. Shift the body weight forward and you have that choice. Maybe you're gonna hold it right here. Get longer, stretch further, or just gently start to roll the right hip on top of the left. There'll be a little bit of weight in your left fingertip. Right hand can stay on the hip, or it could reach up to the sky. With the right leg, don't worry if it's high or low, but get it straight and strong. The left knee, the standing leg, could be softly bent, or it might be straight through. We just have another full breath. Lighten your touch with the left fingertip. And then go ahead and release both right hand and foot back down and give yourself that chance to just hang out, to just hold. 
if you'd like to hold on to the elbow, go to the opposite grip. So go to what feels natural and swap that over. Dropping the elbows, dropping the weight of the world from your shoulders while you're here. And then we'll release the hands. Keep the spine round. So really draw the navel upwards towards the spine. And we'll do a bit of a roll up here or the reverse of the roll down. Rolling our body up, releasing an inhale. We'll start to slide the knees, the thighs, the hips forward. The hands swing backwards. So you're getting a bit of a back bend. So I pull the arms all the way around in front and pull them down in front of the heart. Just give yourself one full breath. Beautiful. Shift your body weight into the standing left leg. Your right toes can either stay on the floor, ankle calf, or if you can get your right foot all the way above the left knee, feel free. But you want the hips to level the right knee open. And if you feel steady, you're welcome to reach the arms up overhead, but really feel like you're getting lifted up through those fingernails. So you'll even notice the rib cage lift off of the hip. Your eye gaze is just resting on one point, something not moving to help you keep a steady, focused mind and body in this shape. So start to bring the hands down in front of the heart, softly bend into the left knee, and then we'll gracefully step that right foot back and we'll find ourselves in what we call warrior two. So the whole front body faces the right side of the mat and the eyes face out over the left fingertip. Sink down just a little bit deeper into that bent left knee. And then imagine if I was standing behind you, I just pull your right hand back, maybe a centimeter. Good. We'll hold this shape, and as we start to reverse, I want you to think of your right hip dropping down, so this right side waist stays long as you reach left arm up and back. And you are welcome to slide the right hand reaching forward, so it feels like both hands getting pulled apart equal in opposite directions. Just give yourself one more breath. We'll unravel and come up to two straight legs. Spin all 10 toes to face the right side of your mat. And you might even spin your heels a little wider than the toes. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, keep the spine long, starting your fold. I'm not mirroring you today, so we'll all place our back right fingertips on the floor under the nose. And then peel the left arm up to the ceiling. So we're twisting only the spine. We're not rotating or dropping the pelvis. Keeping crown of head and tail reaching away from one another, twisting from navel and above. Keep the breath deep, especially in these twists. Feel that expansion of upper abdomen and ribs and that contraction, just gently massaging out those belly organs. We'll release left hand down, place it just underneath the fingertips. Make sure the pelvis stays level as you start to twist open. You might find if your spine doesn't twist, all the way, your right arm can't reach overhead. I don't want you to add any compression or pinching at the back of the shoulder. Uh, shift just a little bit more body weight into the balls of the feet so we're not so heavy into those heels. Beautiful. And then we'll place the right hand down. Start to, to walk the hands towards the front edge of the mat. You'll have to spin on the feet so all 10 toes stay forward. Now step the right foot in just enough that you can get the whole right foot flat. Now most of our spines would be a little bit round here. So we're gonna lift the head and the heart, float the fingertips away. You wanna feel the hips are level, the sides of the waist long, and then find where you can place your hands. It could be on your left shin or ankle. It might be back to the floor but you want really long line, level hip. Okay. We have just another breath. Now, strong in those legs, see if you can reach your right arm forward. It's glued to your right ear. Then maybe reach your left arm forward. So you have this long parallel line with arms and spine. And then you'll rise up, reach up, lean backwards, 
bring your hands down in front of your heart. You're stepping forward. We should be stepping to the front edge of the mat. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And then we're all set for the other side. We're balancing on the right foot. The left toes just turn out. Remember, you don't have to take that left foot all the way up to the inner thigh. But if you do, make sure the right leg is pushing into the left foot, not just foot to left. Once you've found your steady balance, you can reach the arms overhead. Imagine though the shoulder blades just kind of melting down the middle of your back as you reach the fingernails up away from it. Keep the breath just so calm and steady. This practice becoming a real gentle movement meditation. Meditation in motion. On your exhale, the hands just pour down in front of the heart. Soften that right knee and you'll slow step that left foot back. Just settle into your warrior two. This time we're just gonna spin the palms to face up. Keep the elbows quite soft, but the shoulders drop down. Good. Once you've settled into your shape, you'll just look out over the right middle finger. Feeling that strength, that stability that steadiness that this pose brings. And from this place of strength, drop that back left hip, we'll float the right arm off, the left arm could stretch forward. Reaching integrity and length. One more breath. We'll unravel and come back up. Right leg goes straight, spin all 10 toes to the long edge of your mat. In fact, spin those heels so they're wider than your toes. Inhale, lean back. And as you exhale, you're gonna pull all the way down. I'm gonna face from the side. So once your fingertips find the floor, lift your breastbone, and then imagine your ribs pulling away from your hip. And then you can start to fold. You're welcome to bring the hands closer to your feet. Let the head be heavy but we're gonna avoid that rounding sensation in the upper back. Think of this, this is a bit more of a traction stretch to so the top of the head and the tailbone pulling away so the spine and sideways go really long and there's no compression, no flexion of the spine. So we have just another full breath. So we lift to our fingertips, start to walk towards the front edge of the mat so that right foot is in front. And then just step the back left foot in a little bit so you can set up for your pyramid pose. Both feet are flat. You'll notice your spine might have rounded a little bit here. So we can float the fingertips up. I usually need to use my hands to feel, huh, is my pelvis pretty level? Sideways long, spine long. Then can I keep my fingertips to reach my shins? or my right foot, or do they make it to the floor? But am I able to keep that really level pelvic bowl? Most of us would need to drop the left hip and wrap the right hip back. And I keep that long spine pulling ribs away from me. And then let's see if we can keep that alignment. This time, left arm reach forward first. Maybe right arm reach forward second. Keep those hips strong and rise up. My poor weak right hip doesn't like that one. Lean back if that feels good and then step forward. Both hands press in front of the heart. Bring the hands by the side. Can you bring your feet together to touch? That's not a good fit for everyone. So if it's not a fit for you, it's okay. And we're gonna drop down into our little chair pose. Inhale, the arms are just reaching up. Spin the baby fingers in. Relax the shoulders. This will be our inhale. As you exhale, you're just gonna sweep the floor with your hands, your legs could go straight. Inhale, bend them and stretch back up a little longer. Exhale, fold and sweep. Inhale. Let me do it one more time. Like that inhale. We're gonna really challenge ourselves here to slowly descend. We're lowering down. Now, if your heels feel like they're picking up, it's absolutely fine and place your hands down. I'll show you where we could go. Knees could separate, hands, hips could find the floor without even using the hands. 
you might have a little crash landing. It's cool. It's Saturday. We're at home. Pull your shoulders back. You guys are stars. We're just going to hold for just a moment here. So we find those muscles in the deep abdomen that we need for this kind of shape. Set your feet down for a moment. First two fingers of each hand are going to weave in between the first and second toe. So you're really holding on to your big toe. Then do a big shoulder roll. So you pull your chest forward, shoulder blades back, and then lift your heels up. Find those same deep core muscles, lifting the pelvic floor, and then you'll extend the knees back out towards that sort of tabletop like shape. And you're welcome to stay or take your legs straight. Why not? Good. They can be a bit apart, about shoulder distance apart. You kick the toe into the fingers and keep pulling the shoulder blades back and down. Good. We know if we were in Pilates, we'd rock backwards. We do a little open leg rocker. Not here, not today. You can release the feet. And when you set them down, they're only going to be about as wide as the corners or edges of the mat. And then we are going to start to crawl forward and just resist that urge. The spine, it wants to round and move back. But we're going to pull the chest forward. You can use the hands for support or hold on to the outer edge with your feet or ankle. Think of the spine being long. No wrinkles in the back of the neck, the breastbone pulling forward, your abdomen slowly descending between your thighs, your ribs slowly descending between your knees. You just have another breath like that. And then slowly peel yourself up. We'll slide the feet all the way together. From this tall L like shape. Position, we'll place the right foot just on the inside of the left knee. We want that right knee to always point up. Left elbow is going to hook in the front of the right knee. And we'll just place the right fingertips behind you. Roll that shoulder back and just start to gaze back over the right shoulder. That's good. Now, if you feel like you can maintain that setup, stretch your left arm up and then hook your left elbow outside of the right. You can keep this sort of stop sign hand, or I like to rest it down to the outer right hip. So I have this whole right leg in contact with this whole left forearm, and they're going to push against one another to help me get a little bit more of a rotation in the spine. Feel on the inhale, though, the crown of the head really lifting up. On the exhale, the rib cage are twisting around. Wonderful. Good. Unravel your spine. Keep the left leg out straight. Or you lift your right leg. It's bent and it's going to stack on top of the left butt. So you might stay here or you'll just lean back, bend the left knee. And we're going to keep the heels of the feet away from the hips. So I'm going to show you what it looks like from the front. But remember, I have the opposite side right now. Your knees could eventually stack. Maybe they don't stack today. If this feels terrible, go to cross. If it feels okay, but it doesn't look the same, okay. Hips stay down. So remember, I'm not mirroring you yet. I'm going to go at a little diagonal. Right bum stays down. Left hand come to the floor. Stretch your right arm up and lean to your left side. I want you to push into the left hand so it feels like the right ribs shift to the right side. You could look down with the head or up toward that right arm, whichever feels better. And then just float your way back up. You're going to place your, uh, bend your left elbow so your left hand comes between your shoulder blades. And your right hand tries to slide that left elbow behind the head. So I want it to be on the side for you today so you can see really. The head wants to come forward, but our job is to press the head backwards. It's almost like a double chin. Stay as you are. We also want to pull those front ribs down as we pull the head back. Feel the length in the crown of the head, the heaviness in the hip. God, we only have one more breath. And then we'll just release the hands and let our upper body fold forward over top of the hips. Don't worry how far we go. Keep the breath calm but deep and make sure both hips stay on the floor. Doesn't matter if it feels really good to let your spine round and your head go heavy, feel free. We have about three full breaths. Again, 
So there's these parts of the practice we really want to work to balance out where we're applying a, an intentional effort and where we're, we're letting ourselves pull back and just surrender, allow the pose to kind of land in our own body and start to come towards us. Yeah, so we want to balance not all effort throughout practice, but effort and ease. We'll curl our way back up. You'll lean back into your hands so your fingertips face your bottom, place the feet flat. Do a big shoulder roll and puff up the chest. And with the arms straight, this might feel really good. This is enough. You're welcome to lift the hips up. Try not to let the head collapse behind you, but lift the chest higher than the shoulders, lengthen the tail forward. You'll melt the hips back down. Take both legs straight. This time they're going to stay together, the big toes together. You might even physically or imagine the inner thighs rolling towards one another. Reach the arms up over top. Stretch as far forward as you can with a long spine. Then just drop the hands. They can land outside of the, of the legs or somewhere on the leg. Inhale, lift the breastbone up. Exhale, pull it forward. Don't worry about going down. If you work with length, that's why we lift, and pull forward, the depth, that will come. Yeah? Keep the feet flexed, the toes up to the ceiling, and the elbows, if they're holding part of the leg and pulling a little bit, keep them a little bit wide. Shoulders away from you. Inner thighs roll towards one another. This will help us to unlock the back of the pelvis that ends up really stopping our hamstrings from ever opening in here. Then we're here for just another full breath. And go ahead, slowly. Feel your way back up. We have the whole other side to go, right? Like stay straight. Left foot just kind of hugs the right knee. We sit tall. Inner right elbow to the front of the left knee. Left hand just at the base of the spine. This is where we begin. Shoulders down, crown of the head lift. If you can maintain this position without forcing the arm, then reach the right arm up. Hook it just gently outside of the left knee. And then drop the right hand down. Try to avoid this front right shoulder hiking up. We want that down. Shoulder blade glued to the back ribs as you twist the rest. Using that right elbow and left knee in contact for leverage to help you lift a little taller on the inhale, twist a little further on the exhale. And then we just unwrap all. Use the help of the hand, scoop the left leg up and try to cross left knee right on top of the right thigh. So really get it over there. Then you can lean back and try to bend the right knee and fold that foot in. We're, we're avoiding bringing the feet to the hips. We want them away. And again, I showed you my trick on the other side. If you lean into your hands, you can cross those inner thighs a little bit more. Doesn't matter exactly what it looks like. Try to get your left thumb down. Sit nice and tall. Good. If there's any pain in the knees, come to a cross leg variation or press your right hand down, stretch your left arm up and over. As you push out with the right hand, your left rib cage will start to float to the left side. Keep the breath nice and full, calm, deep. And remember that inhale breath, just a, an invitation to keep bringing your awareness, your attention back inside. The exhale, the out breath, just helping to remove, let go of any of those distractions or disturbances that keep you from being Fully present here now. We'll start to windmill our way back up. So this time we're going to reach right arm up and bend the right elbow. The left hand just assists in bringing the right elbow behind the head. Try to lift the chin and push the whole forehead backwards from the forehead. So the back of the head presses into the left arm. And then simultaneously, the front ribs need to drop back down. So you might even feel a little bit of strain, just a little bit of effort here in the, in the neck. The neck isn't really used to doing that pushing backwards kind of movement. 
We'll go deep into the deep neck flexors. And then release. You can tip forward and let some weight come into your hands. You're welcome to stay with a nice full spine, or you can really let your whole body melt over top to the thighs and the knees. Head can be heavy. You might notice any sensations that are present in your body after that having that right elbow bent behind the head, was there some heat or some uh, tingling or some shaking? These kind of sensations, we allow our mind to just notice them, not have an opinion about them, but just notice them. And all of these practice helping us to become more mindful, more aware, and more in the moment. Beautiful. We'll peel ourselves back up, place those feet down again. They're about as wide as the mat, but this time we're just letting the knees drop gently from side to side. Good. Just a couple more like this. Windscreen wipering those legs across. And we get to make our way down to lie all the way on the back. And when you do arrive, just draw your knees right into the chest. We'll just place one hand on each knee and make individual circles with the knee. So they actually come together into the chest, then open and press forward. Feel as the pelvic bowl rocks forward and backward. Everything the same, but we just swap the direction. So knees together, push forward, open, in, together again. Letting this part of the practice feel like a, a little massage for the whole body, a gentle massage. <laughs> we'll keep the knees together, drape the arms out to the side. And then just drop both knees over to the right side. And when they land, you'll notice your left knee kind of slid away from your right knee. Just see if you can bring it to stack more in line with the right knee. And then You'll notice your left shoulder might have lifted a bit more off the floor. See if you can look left, drop that left shoulder a little bit. Good. Give yourself another full breath in. You might even sigh this breath out. <sighs> Gently just rolling back onto the back. Arms outstretched and your both knees will fall to the left. And when they land, you'll invite that right knee to just stack a little more on top of the left. You'll look out to that right shoulder that's begun to lift, and you'll just welcome it down a little bit there. That breath continued to flow, but notice how it's just naturally started to soften. How the exhale is naturally coming even longer than the inhale breath. The body knows it's time to let go, time to soften and surrender. We'll come back into the center. Let's start by stretching the legs straight up to the ceiling. If you need the support of your hands, just keep them down. Or you might like to stretch your arms to the ceiling as well. We're going to hold here with everything active for another breath or two. And then while we keep arms and legs up, we're just gonna let them go really soft as if there, there's no effort involved at all. And so the elbows and the knees will bend. You might notice your fingers, if you let go of control, the fingers naturally curl. The toes might kind of curve in or out. And you might scan your body for just a moment here, scanning all the way from the tips of the toes, all the way through the legs. Scan your awareness, let it move through the hips, through the torso. From the fingertips down the length of the arms, let your awareness move through your body, through your shoulders, neck, head, face, stay for another inhale. And then exhale, just melt arms, legs, everything out. You might look a bit like a five-pointed star, just melting down into that support beneath you natural gentle rise and fall of abdomen and chest with every passing breath. Letting go of the need to control, to direct, but simply allow 
allow yourself to surrender. Resting here with eyes closed. Feel the creases of the forehead melt away. Feel the lips slightly part and the tongue fall from the roots of the mouth. Whole back body heavy. Releasing, relaxing, and letting go. time, this, this practice, this intentional effort, we start to shift out of this constant pattern of thinking and overthinking. Awareness begins to take over our thinking. Instead of being in control of your life, the thinking instead becomes the servant of your awareness. Awareness is this this conscious connection with, with the overall universal intelligence. Another word for it is presence. Consciousness without thought is what we cultivate in our practice. If you're uh, still enjoying that Shavasana, just take time to roll gently to the right side. Give yourself a moment to lie on the right side. You can please pause for a final moment in presence. We pause in appreciation. What a beautiful way to roll into your week. And then when you are ready, you'll press yourself up to a comfortable tall seat. We'll let the hand palms come to meet. The thumbs to the breastbone. That little lift of the breastbone up. As the chin drops down, we drop head to heart. We honor ourselves with the mantra, Sat Nam, truth is my essence. Then we honor one another with the mantra, Namaste, that inner light within me honoring the inner light within you. Ugh.